Hey everyone and welcome to Isms by Josie. Today we're going to be doing a St. Patrick's Day design. For my returning subscribers, thank you so much for tuning in. And for my new viewers, please consider subscribing, share, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and click on the notification bell for future videos. And this is Dexter. He is inspecting my table to let me know everything's a-okay. <laughs> I threw that in there because I love it when he um, butts into my videos. He also butts into my um, husband's videos as well. At any rate, so today we're going to be doing a St. Patrick's Day design. Um, I was waiting to do this because it's going to be a little different. Um, the theme's going to be there, but I'm going to be doing an aquarium nail. Last year I did an aquarium nail, but it was more of an actual aquarium. Um, it was like an under the sea theme. So I said, what if I did a St. Patrick's theme with an aquarium nail? How would I suppose to make those two different ideas mesh? Well, you'll see it today in this video. And apologies for this video being 40 minutes. <laughs> Trust me, I tried to make it as short as possible and it took six hours to film because um, there's a lot of techniques going on here. I Right now I'm using builder gel and um, as you can see, I'm um, using a nail form to shape my nail and I chose this one. And, uh, it's not as long as I wished it would be, but because um, it kind of left like a wide barrel um, so, uh, I wanted to use this so that, um, my aquarium nail will be as wide as possible without looking insanely wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're doing builder gel with, um, an aquarium nail and then the rest of the nails, I'm going to do, um, a poly gel and, uh, my accent nail, I'm going to cover in dip powder. So I have a lot of techniques going on and um, I know I, you could just look at my other videos to see me um, how I do these different techniques. But because this design is just so insane and so intricate, um, I, I am showing how I did them, but like kind of like a shortcut version. So again, like I said, um, it was six hours of recording and I am, um, I've cut it down to 40 minutes. So feel free to skip ahead, uh, feel free to watch this, um, sporadically throughout your day, throughout your week, throughout your month, you know, however, I'm always going to be here for you guys. So you could always tune in whenever you want. You could always watch the videos over and over again, as some of you, um, your videos I do as well. Um, so yes, so here I'm using po clear poly gel to form the backing of the aquarium nail. So as you can see, I had finished, um, sculpting the aquarium nail and, um, we're doing the backing on this. And after we do the backing, I'm going to be, um, creating the two ends of the aquarium nail. So when it's all sealed up, it's going to contain all the lovely um, stuff inside. Um, and you're going to end up seeing what I end up doing with it. So uh, I learned a lot of things doing my first aquarium nail at technically second. So way, way, way back in my list of videos, I showed um, like a very short video of an aquarium nail I did a long time ago, maybe a couple, not a long time ago, I guess maybe a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago or something like that. And, um, and then again, last year I ended up doing, well, we're in 2022 now, right? So I guess 2020 it was, um, I ended up doing another one. So I have learned um, kind of a technique to get this down pat. And um, I think I can now make a very sturdy um, aquarium nail. I mean, I've done a video to do snow globe nails. Um, so it's kind of like a mini aquarium nail, if you will. 
but I love doing stuff like this. It's very fun and challenging at any rate. So I'm using this very fine emery board and I'm going to be just filing down the sides even Steven. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be the right width. Um, this nail form here is going to help guide me as to what size I should be making this in terms of width and um, at the end of it we're just going to file everything down even so um, we don't need to worry about that. So here I'm doing the ends. We don't need as much poly gel but I am realizing that I probably used um, more poly gel than I needed. I don't like wasting poly gel especially this one. This is the um, clear gel, uh, gelish poly gel, and uh, I love their poly gels. Their, uh, the firmness of the gel is super perfect for me. Um, it moves when you want it to move, so I could leave this alone. It's not going to level out at all. Okay. So again, this is going to be a lot of talking in this video to do my step-by-steps. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces, not moving pieces, but I mean, there's like a lot of pieces that I had done uh, for this design. Um, and again, I've, I've been kind of thinking about this for weeks. I'm realizing that I didn't even realize that when I did this, it was daylight savings. So when I finally went to bed at like four in the morning, I was like, it's four in the morning. <laughs> I didn't realize we um, sprang forward uh, Sunday um, morning. So uh, it was four. But um, yeah, St. Patrick's Day, like every other holiday um, for what, like two years now have just flown right by and snuck up on me like, oh my goodness. So, um, I didn't realize St. Patrick's Day was coming so close and I hadn't done a single like design for it. And that's why I had like last week's design for the short nails. I ended up using greens because I know I was leading up to St. Patrick's Day, but I really didn't give it much thought and I, um, yeah, I didn't think it was coming this fast. I mean, I, for the past, I guess you would say since the beginning of Fe February, my life has kind of been turned upside down a little bit and it kind of blindsided me, um, as with life that usually happens. Um, so I just didn't know how to catch it and I just been kind of, you know, um, internalizing things and I've been trying not to do that in general for the past, you know, few months now. Um, and so pushing out these videos had been a little difficult, um, but they do really help. Um, they help me get through the, the day to day. I'm not doing this every day, but I mean, it gets me through the week, I guess. <laughs> so when, um, St. Patrick's, uh, St. Patrick's Day week was coming up, I was starting to get kind of back in the groove of my routine and I was just like, holy cannoli. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. So um, I do have a list of things that I, I wanted to put in video and I ended up combining um, the aquarium nails idea and um, this, the holiday. So this is what today's video is all about. <laughs> so um, I would like to tell you what I'm doing now, but geez, I guess I was out of frame for this long. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. I applied some poly gel onto the edge of this um, end piece here, a very thin, thin sliver. And I am now just using some slip solution to kind of mold that into the creases. I want to make sure that I seal this all in because this time I'm going to be using baby oil. The first um, three times that I have done anything like this, I was using water. Um, I just find it 
better to have something that I know will just evaporate if anything does break. Um, but since that hasn't been really the case in those instances, I said, all right, well, let's do baby oil so that I get better um, movement with the objects inside because unfortunately using water, um, it moves just so fast that, you know, on a short nail, I mean, it's not even short, as you can see, it's pretty long, but in that um, circumstance is considered short. I mean, those objects just fly to the other side and then it's over. <laughs> and I was even thinking, uh, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. I was even thinking about using clear dish soap or shampoo or something just to get um, the objects moving a lot slower but I was afraid that it might get um, stuck in there I don't think it would so maybe I missed an opportunity so maybe down the road when I do another aquarium nail maybe I'll use shampoo or, or dish detergent so yeah I'm using baby oil this time but I just want to make sure that everything is perfectly sealed because I do not, I'm not a fan of any oils really. I mean, cuticle oil is just pushing it there, <laughs> but I know it's needed. Um, but I just don't like my hands feeling greasy. So if that nail breaks and I get all that baby oil on me, I'm going to just freak out. <laughs> but anyway, so um, I'm just going to show one of the nails that I do the poly gel with just to um, remind or um, I guess replay for you all how I do it. And it's so fairly simple. As you can see here, I mean, this poly gel is a force to be reckoned with. Um, I said in my unboxing that Gelish is the first company ever to create the poly gel. So it's definitely something that you would want to at least try once in your lifetime. I'm telling you, you have to. I mean, like it's pricier than other poly gels by far. Um, I cannot, cannot remember how much this tube was. It might have been $30 or something. I could be wrong. It could be less. I don't know. It's so bad that like, you know, when I, I bought a kit when it started out and it had everything like the lamp, the poly gel, like three poly gels. Um, uh, it had the slip solute, the large slip solution. It had uh, the dehydrator, the primer the um, cuticle oil, I mean, everything that I needed to do a set, oh, files, um, and no, I don't think it came with files, did it? At any rate, um, when I bought that, that was like, uh, maybe six years now, maybe more, and it was like 400 something, so yes, that's pricey, but I don't know how much the individual bottles are, and then I just bought this clear poly gel for Christmas. I mean, it lasted me a pretty long time. Um, but um, as you can see, like the consistency of it is just perfect. Like um, the firmness, again, like I said, it'll only go where you put it. And it, um, for that reason, is so good because if you're sculpting any type of nail, I mean, it gives you that much... Um, time to play and make it perfect and then as you can see once I get back in frame here um, it's smooth as heck look at that stuff it's just like it's like a freaking nail and uh, the slip solution is by far the you know well, I can't say the best because honestly I haven't uh, I think I've only used the model ones oh and the beetle slip um, but this lip solution evaporates. It's liquidy, not gooey, and it smells sweet. I don't know how else to explain it. It just smells sweet, not like candy sweet, but more like a floral sweet. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, if you, I mean, you can check on Amazon, but you have to be a, a licensed technician to um, buy it um, if you want to try it out you can go to nailsupply.com or nail supply I'll leave a link below but it was in my unboxing because I was googling around how the heck am I going to get um, you know more of these things because my kit was was running low and I ended up finding a website that sold it so um, yeah got really lucky on that and I will never probably um, 
stop using these like i hope someday even though i'm not a licensed technician that um jellish will like contact me someday and be like hey would you like to be like our brand ambassador or something i don't know anyway moving on to on on another example of a nail that's in this set my accent nail so i did the poly gel um foundation part i made it thin because I knew I was going to be putting dip powder over it. I love the, um, I guess, color, the good color, or this glitter, I guess, when I was, um, you know, uh, doing a product review for the dip powders. So I definitely wanted to use that in this set. So I did a number, uh, I think I did um, three coats of um, three quarters of the way, and then I did two coats of the whole nail. And now I thought, I thought, I thought I was dipping this in clear acrylic. And um, yeah, and mind you, this is probably like what time o'clock at night. <sighs> tap, 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 take the brush and I'm brushing it off. And I'm like, oh, there you see it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I realized that it's not clear, it's white. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to do this nail all over again. And I said, screw it. So I'm applying the activator per the instructions. And then after that, I'm going to be applying a layer of the base coat. And I said, all right, once this sucker, and it's like an instant, it makes everything hard, I guess. So once that was done, I just, now I'm showing you how I undid my mess because there's already a lot of layers on there. Um, I decided to just file that white off. <laughs> Get it? File it right off the white off. Anyway, <laughs> I'm cheesy. So, wow, um, what a mistake of mine. And it was probably because I wasn't even thinking. The clear cap was just um, an afterthought because I didn't want to file the glitter to where it looked silvery, but... Um, after all this filing, I realized that the glitter was not really affected by my filing. It still looked very pretty. So I guess it's the um, other glitters, the darker glitters, that when you file them down, um, the metal shows through, which is not all that pretty. So um, yeah, what a big mistake. And I left this in there, you guys. I could have saved more time not adding this in, but you have to know that um, it's very rare that I end up doing something in video and I screw up, but it happens. You know, no one is perfect. And I was definitely delirious thinking, and I pulled all the materials I needed onto my desk that, you know, was ready to go. None of it was clear. So, um, that was my mistake, but at least in the process, I mean, I've seen when, um, videos of people dipping with acrylic and it works. So, <laughs> so um, I was going to be purchasing a clear dip powder, but I guess I could just use the clear acrylic powder. Um, from now on, especially since I'm, I'm just going to try to use up my acrylic powders somehow. I really don't, um, like using the monomer and, um, I'm not really interested in like trying something, a different brand just cause I think I'm now a poly gel, gel, builder gel kind of nail person. It's so much um, it is easier and it smells far less close to nothing. And if you use the poly gel from Jellish, it smells like sweet flowers. <laughs> so, and I, you know, it's one thing for me to sit there and deal with it. But then when like my husband's like putting his t-shirt over his nose, I feel terrible. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so moving this along I just cannot believe I did that leave a comment below for any time any of my um YouTube family members that have their own channels let me know of an instance um whether you do nails or not I know I watch a lot of or people that watch me that don't necessarily do nails but um 
comment about a video that you were working on that totally just did, like it went left. <laughs> I mean, hopefully it was salvageable like I'm doing now, but um, yeah, I want to know that I'm not like alone in this like crazy YouTube um, content creating world. It's pretty tough, you know, like just coming out with content every week and I don't plan. So I am very appreciative to myself, well, first to you guys, but to myself that like on the fly, I can come up with something like I'll literally think about it maybe Wednesday and then, uh, or maybe Friday sometimes, um, that freaks me out a little bit. And then I'll start, um, working on my nails Saturday night, sometimes Friday night, Friday night, I usually remove the previous set. If I know I'm going to be using, um, regular nail polish. I'll try if I'm still awake, I'll try to like form the nail and then um, put on the regular nail polish so that I can sleep um, with them overnight to dry. Um, but yeah, uh, creating content for YouTube, uh, is, it was fun in the beginning. It's still fun now, but like it just came out because you're new and you haven't shown X, Y, Z. And last, uh, 2020, 2021, I did the birthstone nails. And so, you know, how many ways can you do that? So it was like, oh, that's great. And then, um, after I think I started doing the birthstone nails in August and I ended with September, 2021. So then I was like, oh, what am I going to do for birthdays now? <laughs> Can't do the birthstones again. You know, it's like, oh. I'm just afraid at some point that I'm just not going to come up with anything. So that's, that's kind of like, um, a YouTube anxiety kind of thing. And then, um, yeah, every now and then making mistakes. So, um, hopefully I can still pull through and make things, um, work out every week. Um, I actually been in entertaining the idea of doing a regular two video now because some days like I, I pay homage to short nail people out there, you know, um, for the longest time I could only have short nails because I cannot grow my nails to save my life, but I do love long nails. So some weeks when I'm doing the short nails, I'm like, oh, this, this design's pretty, but it would look so much better on long nails. <laughs> so, um, every other week I'm kind of like feeling like, oh, I wish I could do a long nail, but I don't want to like go the extra, you know, it's a lot of work if you can imagine. Um, but yeah, so here I'm just going back to, um, the aquarium nail. I let the, uh, the rainbow stripes dry a decent amount because I was going to top coat it with gel and I didn't want it to wrinkle. But after I'm doing that, I'm just going to seal all of this in with some builder gel and I'm just lining up the rainbow lines and don't care so much about the extra, the excess poly gel on the sides. Cause again, I'll just file that down. But once I had sealed, um, the, builder gel the first time, I'm going to go back in and fill in any cracks. There shouldn't be because I put a decent amount um, on this thing. You don't want to put too much to where it's um, gooing into your aquarium space. But I, again, I just want to make sure that everything is um, nice and sealed for the baby oil. So I had just already filed everything down, even Steven, and I'm just going to go by and do one more seal with the builder gel. I just want to make sure that filing everything sm smooth didn't break any seals. And after I put on a layer of this builder gel where the, um, the connections were, I'm just going to smooth it down with some top coat. So for sure, for sure, for sure, this sucker isn't going to be, um, breaking. And I actually have not done that in my three previous, um, aquarium globe, um, designs. Um, again, nothing happened, but 
I just don't want anything to happen. <laughs> it's baby oil. Um, yeah. So I'm getting these really tiny, tiny gold pieces here. Um, and I'm just going to drop these in. I had also put um, some stars. I have stars on these, um, this little wheel palette. And um, I put like seven of them since seven is a lucky number. I don't know. And then I'm just throwing in these little circles so that could be like the gold pieces. So I guess you can imagine now that the idea is that these gold pieces are going to go down um, the rainbow. And I wanted to add some green glitter just to give it some sparkly flecks in there. And actually, after all said and done, I probably could have done without the glitter. Um, I could have probably maybe put gold glitter, but I didn't want to go too extra with the gold. So here I searched near and far to find this small travel size baby oil because I don't like baby oil. I don't use baby oil, but I don't want to waste baby oil. So I tried to find the smallest bottle possible and I found this, hmm, I think in Walmart. Yeah, it was in the um, baby section. It wasn't even in the um, traveling size section, which it should be. But anyway, so I'm just wiping off any excess if there is um, baby oil that spilled out. And now I'm just going to put more builder gel on the rim of this opening here. And then I'm going to take my other end that I made and squish that down. I've got my gooseneck lamp and I'm just going to be carrying it like this. I just want to make sure I push that in place so that um, it has a good um, connection there. And once I did that, I did cure it uh, in a regular lamp for 60 seconds because I'm crazy like that. <laughs> but I'm going back in and I'm sealing up any um, crevices that, you know, may have been there. I mean, I would have noticed by now because the baby oil would have um, leaked out. But um, I'm just making sure everything is nice and sealed. And I'm going to cure this in the regular lamp for 60 seconds. Now I just wanted to show how I did this. Because if anybody wants to try making their own aquarium mail. Um, for the sides of the aquarium I used a regular file. But for this end I'm just going to use the uh, cone shape bit. Um, just because I just want to get to the edge of that that piece. I want to make sure that I don't start filing the sides because I don't want to break any seals that I've made. Even though I already backed up those sides with more builder gel and a top coat, again, I'm just probably super paranoid. But I did take a file to it after the fact to smooth everything out. And then just to make sure um, that everything's sealed, like I did with the sides, I'm just going to be putting a line of builder gel and then I'm going to top coat it. And it's fine if it ends up being a little bulbous because we're not done. This is why this video is long because there's a lot of detail in this and I know some people are just like daunting at the 40 minute um, video, but I love, love, love a lot of detail in everything um, so what we're gonna do is we are going to be making a pot at the end of this nail because where's the gold gonna go to there's always a pot at the end of the rainbow <laughs> and it's gonna be catching all of these gold pieces that are falling from it so um, I you know again like I'm just a normal person that is I don't have much going on <laughs> which is why I'm able to do these videos but like sometimes I freak myself out when I come up with these ideas because it's like what <laughs> who are you and where did you come from um so now I'm putting some clouds in here um I wasn't too sure like how I was going to dress up this end of the nail 
And I said, well, you know, um, you might as well put some clouds up in the sky and have a rainbow come from somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Plus, I have to cover that line that you can visibly see that breaks up the um, base of the, the nail to the tip. Giving that a cure. And then I'm going to be um, top coating this with uh, some top coat. It's looking very pretty if I could just stay within frame. <laughs> so sad. I'm just going to, um, I noticed that it was a little translucent for me. I know in video it's not, um, but I'm just applying a second coat of the um, black shadow. And it's really coming coming together. I didn't put a green stripe in the rainbow because there's already going to be enough green in this design. So I didn't want to become too redundant. I feel like, I mean, the rainbow is okay, but I do think it's missing the green stripe. So who knows? Maybe I should have left a green stripe in there or maybe it's fine. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the rainbow, but I am loving this whole thing right now like I just turned this nail into an aquarium and it is dropping gold into this pot and it's mine at the end of the day so <laughs> not everybody gets to catch that pot of gold moving on to the next nail I'm actually using model one's base coat because um it it um I need to varnish um this green glitter on it um, I could just sprinkle it, but as you can see, when, if I just leave it like dropped on there, it's kind of like textury. But if I smooth it down, it leaves like a hollow glitter look to it. And because we have a rainbow in the middle of the set, I wanted to keep that hollow look. And you can't really see it in video, which is a shame. Um... I've been able to see other videos do the same thing and you can see like all the colors and I just don't know how to do that. So, but rest assured that hollow is in there and it goes very well um, with the rainbow nail. So for my accent nail and my thumbnail, I'm going to be putting some rhinestones. I was kind of like at this point and I was like, oh no, I have no idea what I'm going to do to this these nails now. I did the, the best part of it and now it's like I don't know what to do with the rest. So um, I decided, listen, I'm the bling queen and I haven't done um, bling in a while again, which is weird. I don't know why sometimes I get in these moments where I just don't bling out. I am going to put out a video with those 5XL nails and I'm for sure going to bling the whole thing. So um, wait for that video. Um, click on that notification bell if you want to see it. But anyway, so yeah, I want to adorn this whole thing. Well, not whole thing, but I want to make like a, an organic swipe down with um, these rhinestones. And see, it's been so long, I didn't remember that I have to have the rhinestones on the left side of the table because I'm left-handed and if I'm doing it like this I can't be in frame and that's when I realized oh shucks I need to be in frame it's crazy um how things are sometimes um but yeah thank you so much for um keeping up with me if you're still tuned in i really appreciate it the views um and the watch time definitely help me uh and um you it it takes um i'm very grateful for the time you take to watch the process because um I don't consider myself a nail, I'm definitely not a nail technician by any means, but I do consider myself crafty, an artist, um, so when I do work like this, however big or small, you know, drawing or nails or anything, like there's a lot of thought and care in myself that I put into it, so if you tune into that and watch the whole thing, I 
I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate that because I'm putting everything that I have in this and, um, it's, it's just something, uh, to me that's very special. So for my thumbnail, I'm just, um, flipping the colors around now. I'm using this, like, I mean, I guess it gives off like a gold vibe rhinestone. I'm trailing that down the nail and then I'm going to be backing it up with the iridescent stones. So for the accent nail on my ring finger, I did the green rhinestones here. I'm doing like the goldish looking ones. But um, I love the iridescent color in there because it's reflecting so much other color that it's working very well. It's making this um, green nail more like a plant, right? Like there's, it's a living kind of organic kind of thing. I don't know. Or it could just be me. <laughs> so, yeah, there was no reasons for this. Um, I'm just randomly putting rhinestones where I think I should. I do have three, like, gold um, coin-looking decals that are probably getting lost in this nail at this point. But the idea behind it was, you know, it's just raining gold. It's probably not saying, well, it's more raining, more raining glitter than gold. <laughs> but there are um, gold pieces in there. So after I um, get all this situated here, let's put this last piece there give that a cure and we're going to move on to the last piece of this set for my index and pinky finger I'm going to be doing these glitter shamrocks I put some white gel polish uh, sprinkled some gold glitter on that gave that a cure and we're going to move on to um, do this a number of times for both the index and the pinky nail and then I'm going to do the stems last I guess I could have done it all at once but I feel like when you separate it um, the glitter sits on it differently so you can see the texture of it or at least the separation of it I don't know I don't uh, prefer things to be one-dimensional but just going to tap this off and I'm not going to um, put a clear coat on it. I want the green background to be nice and smooth and have that hollow sheen. And then I want the texture of this gold glitter um, coming out. It looks kind of velvety. So last bit of this video here, we're going to be putting some cuticle oil onto each nail, making sure that everything is nice and cared for. I mean, we're coming out of the, the winter season so my skin has definitely not been as dry as it was before but this is definitely needed and here is the end result my St. Patrick's Day nails with my rainbow aquarium nail with the gold pieces going down into the pot here is a close-up I love all the colors of this. It's just those stones are just reflecting some magic right now. <laughs> and that aquarium nail is like, it's, you can tell it's a thick nail, but it's not too bad, you know? And I'm going to show you a close up of the gold going down into the pot. How cute is that? I just cannot right now. I can't. <laughs> Well, there you have it. This is Isms by Josie. Please share a like and subscribe for future videos. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This was a really fun video for me to do. Thank you if you have watched the whole thing through. I really appreciate it. And join me again next time when I do my short nail video. Possibly long. Who knows? Thanks. Bye.